After watching this video, you should be able to describe the somatosensory system and its associated neural pathways. Ultimately, what you want to be able to do is localize lesions. So if you're given a patient case of somatosensory loss, you should be able to predict where the location of that lesion is okay, in the somatosensory system. Alternatively, if you happen to know that there's a lesion in the somatosensory system somewhere, you should be able to predict what sorts of deficits there's going to be with respect to the somatosensory system. All of this is based off of knowing the pathways, knowing where the information is coming in, knowing where it's going. Okay? Let's start off with just a basic definition of the somatosensory system, which is the perception of body sensations from the skin surfaces, joints, and muscles. Okay? There's two major flavors. There's discriminative touch, sometimes called fine touch, proprioception, joint position sense, pain and temperature, and also crude touch. And there's always going to be three neurons, a first order, second order, and third order neuron. Information always starts in the peripheral nervous system, ends on the other side, crossing in the midline to the parietal lobe, the primary somatosensory cortex. And of course, again, there has to be a decussation. The information has to cross the midline. So now let's turn our attention to a horizontal cross section through the cervical spinal cord, seen here. We see dorsal, posterior is in the back. We have ventral or anterior is in, in the front. We have the dorsal root ganglion, which contains first order neuron cell bodies. That's connected to the spinal cord uh, via the dorsal root. And we can see these structures are symmetrical. We have them on both sides. All right, now when we're looking at the whole spinal cord here, we see in the center, there's an H of gray matter, which has uh, neuron cell bodies, the vestigial central canal in the center. Okay, and in the back, we in green here, we have dorsal columns, which can contains sensory information for discriminative touch proprioception. And you can see that there's a laterally located fasciculus cuneatus and immediately fasciculus gracilis. The cuneatus only appears about, um, about at T6 and above in the spinal cord, whereas the gracilis is throughout the spinal cord. We see the spinal thalamic tract here in red. It contains pain temperature information, also crude touch. There's an anterior white commissure, which uh, has the uh, fibers that are going to cross the midline. We'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. We also have the lateral corticospinal tract, which is part of the motor system. So we're just here just to show everything. And then we have the spinal cerebellar tracts, um, which, which are just all summed up here in purple, uh, that are also found in the cord. Next, we're going to look at a schematic of all the important elements that you need for the somatosensory system to work. Looking at the bottom and working our way up, we have the spinal cord, the sacral, lumbar, and thoracic cervical spinal cord segments, right, because you have to have the information traveling and ascending upward um, in the spinal cord. We were just looking at the individual tracks, the dorsal columns for discriminative touch proprioception, and the spinal thalamic tracks for pain, temperature, and crude touch. Now that information also has to ascend up through the brainstem. In fact, it's the, it's the back part of the brainstem, the, the medulla, and then we have the, the uh, pons and midbrain tegmentum. And then that information has to go to the thalamus, which is a collection of nuclei, and ultimately the parietal lobe. Now notice that all of these elements all are split into two because we have a right and a left. And that's very important, knowing where things are coming in and where they're going and what side they're on, because that's going to help us localize lesions. The first pathway we're going to look at is going to be the pathway that carries information through the dorsal columns of the spinal cord and the medial lemniscus of the brain stem. In green, this pathway, the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway, is going to be transmitting discriminative touch, sometimes it's called fine touch information, and it's also going to be carrying proprioception information, or sometimes this is called joint position sense. Okay, and collectively, this is going to be carried through the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Now, let's 
uh, take an example of the lower extremity, some nerve endings, okay, that are going to pick up this information. Okay, we'll continue our green color. And those sensory receptors are going to fire off action potentials and carry those action potentials into the spinal cord, okay, the dorsal part of the spinal cord. And actually, these are special uh, neurons called pseudounipolar neurons that have their cell bodies located in the dorsal root ganglion. And they're going to go and ascend up through the dorsal column, specifically the um, medial dorsal columns, the, the, the fasciculus gracilis, synapse in the caudal medulla, go up the contralateral brainstem, synapse in the thalamus, and then that go to the primary somatosensory cortex located in the parietal lobe. Okay, now we have some important synapses here and we need to describe some of these parts. Um, the synapse in the caudal medulla, since the information was traveling up the medial dorsal columns called the, the fasciculus gracilis, uh, makes sense that this nucleus would be called the nucleus gracilis. Okay, and once that synapse occurs, these fibers arc forward, these internal arcuate fibers, okay, and cross the midline, or decussate, and travel up the contralateral medial lemniscus. When I say contralateral, contralateral to where the stimulus occurred. So we started on the left for our stimulus, now we're going up the right medial lemniscus, and that ultimately is going to go and synapse in a very important nucleus, the VP nucleus of the thalamus or ventral posterior nucleus, particularly the lateral portion, VPL. Okay? And that uh, information is going to go up to the corona radiata and ultimately to the parietal lobe and synapse there. Now, um, if we look at the upper extremity, we can do a similar schematic. So we got some nerve endings in the upper extremity. Can illustrate that there some sensory receptors action potentials fire we have the dorsal root ganglion enter the cord dorsally now we see we're entering the higher up in the in the cervical cord because we're dealing with upper extremities we have a synapse in the caudal medulla it's going to cross the midline go up the medial lemniscus on the other side like we had before synapse in vpl okay and then go to the primary somatosensory cortex in the parietal lobe. Now I want to point out that um, in the parietal lobe, the medial parietal lobe um, has the lower extremity map and as we move more laterally, now you see that we moved out uh, a little more laterally in the parietal lobe and that's where the upper extremities would be and then ultimately a little more laterally you have the face. Okay, so um, that would be the the pathway. Now um, we also see that the nucleus would be a little different. We have the nucleus uh, cuneatus rather than the nucleus gracilis and that's because the information was traveling up the fasciculus cuneatus and then um, we go to a different part ultimately of the parietal lobe. But everything else is the same. Now we're going to look at the spinothalamic tract, which is an informative name because it tells you you're starting in the spinal cord and then you're going up to the thalamus. Okay, so it's a spinothalamic tract here in red. And then we're also going to include the spinal lemniscus, which is the part of this pathway that's going to be in the brain stem. Okay, so collectively all this together, we can consider it a pathway. Okay, and this pathway is important in transmitting pain and temperature information as well as crude touch. Okay, now let's start like we did last time uh, with the lower extremity, getting some pain temperature stimuli. We have some nerve endings that are going to pick up the sensory uh, stimuli, fire action potentials. We're going to send those action potentials in on typically small unmyelinated and myelinated axons entering in through the dorsal part of the cord. There's our pseudounipolar neuron with the dorsal root ganglion having the, the cell bodies of the first order neuron. The synapse is in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, cross the anterior white commissure, and now we're going up 
on the other side through the spinothalamic tract up through the brain stem, spinal lumniscus, and synapsing in the ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus and then ultimately on the medial part of the parietal lobe. Okay. Now notice that the crossing is in the cord, again in the anterior white commissure, spinothalamic tract in the cord, and then once those axons enter the brainstem, it's now called the spinal lumniscus, which happens to be located in the lateral medulla as opposed, the, as opposed to the medial medulla, like we had for the last pathway. And then we have the VPL again. Those axons go up through the corona radiata, not only synapse in the parietal lobe in, in S1, but also S2 and elsewhere. It's not shown in this diagram. Now, um, what we can also do um, once we've mapped out this pathway, okay, looking at things going up through the, the spinal lumniscus, thalamus, and, and parietal lobe, is we can go and look at the upper extremity as well and see how that compares, okay? And um, really, there's not much of a difference for this first part, except we have to understand that the sensory information is going to be entering in a higher part of the spinal cord, this part of the spinal cord that serves the upper extremities, like the cervical cord. It's going to enter the dorsal root, enter the dorsal part of the spinal cord, synapse in the dorsal horn, cross in the anterior white commissure, and then go up through the spinal of the lumniscus and synapse in VPL again. But it, now the difference is that it's going to the upper extremity part of the map in the parietal lobe, which is a little more laterally located. Okay, and that is the summary of the pathway. Okay, let's put everything together. Let's compare and contrast our discriminative touch, proprioception, and pain temperature pathways for the body. Remember, in this video, we did not discuss any of the somatization for the face. That's more complicated. That's going to be discussed in another video. However, we are going to compare here the locations of the first, second, and third order somas and where these pathways decussate. It's very important to understand um, the similarities and differences between these pathways to help us truly localize lesions. And remember, that's really what we want to be able to do. Okay, so the first pathway that we discussed was the discriminative touch proprioception pathway, which is called the dorsal column. Remember, dorsal columns are structure in the dorsal part of the spinal cord dorsal column slash medial lumniscus pathway. Remember, medial lumniscus is the structure that's in the brain stem. Okay? Now, the first order somas, they're always going to be in the dorsal root ganglion, which is part of the peripheral nervous system just outside the spinal cord. The second order somas are in the caudal medulla. Actually, the dorsal part of the caudal medulla. And there's two sets of nuclei there based on whether the information is coming from the lower or upper extremities. Okay, if it's coming through the nucleus gracilis, remember the medial dorsal columns, that's going to go to the nucleus gracilis. And if it's going up the lateral dorsal columns, which is the upper extremities, the fasciculus uh, cuneatus, that's going to synapse in the nucleus cuneatus. We're going to then go from those second order axons and synapse in the thalamus on the VPL nucleus and the decussation is going to occur at the same location where the second order somas are located which is in the caudal medulla and since those second order neurons are in the dorsal part of the caudal medulla they're going to arc forward internally these internal arcuate fibers and then go up the medial lumniscus in the brainstem and remember, the medial lumiscus is, is located medially in, in the medulla as opposed to laterally. Now let's contrast that with the spinal, spinothalamic tract, okay, here in red. Remember, we, we also included the name spinothalamic tract slash spinal lumniscus to indicate the part of the pathway that's in the brainstem. The first order somas, they are in the dorsal root ganglion as well. Okay, the, again, peripheral nervous system. And when those axons come into the spinal cord, they synapse um, onto spinal cord second-order neurons that are located in the dorsal horn, 
of that H of gray matter. And then the axons then travel up to the thalamus, synapse in VPL, and then um, the location of the decussation, like we saw earlier, was in the same location as the second order somas, which is in the spinal cord. And that has a special name, the anterior white commissure, which is located um, anteriorly in the cord. So that is the two pathways. We can see that the dorsal root ganglion is common to both. They're, the, all first order uh, neuron somas are located there. The second order somas are in different locations. One's in the brainstem versus the spinal cord, and that happens to be the same place where the decussation occurs, which is very important. Once you get um, out into the brainstem and you're going up the spinal cord, you can see that the dorsal column pathway compared to the spinal thalamic tract, spinal meniscus pathway, um, they ultimately are going to be going um, up to the thalamus. Okay. Once they go up to the thalamus, then they go up to the parietal lobe, and everything's pretty similar from there. So hopefully now you can localize lesions um, if you have a patient that presents with somatosensory dysfunction and be able to put it together along with the somatosensory for the face and other pathways to localize more complex patients. And that concludes this video on somatosensory system.